Hi, it's me, Justin Houston, with you again today here in the park. This beautiful March 19th day, uh, one day away from spring equinox. Yes, uh, spring equinox falls on March 20th this year. Uh, today, uh, last time we were with you all, uh, we were tapping the trees and showing you how the process is of actually tapping the trees. Uh, today, we're going to be cooking that sap down and making some syrup and showing you how that goes. This is the tree we tapped last time. Let's check and see what the situation is here. Oh yeah, we're good and full, so we just take and we dump out that nice sap there and collect it. Pretty good. Oh, kind of locked up in there. Now, uh, we are still in the sap run. It is very cold today, and like I said, whenever that temperature falls down below freezing at night, and up above freezing during the day, that's when it's gonna run. And so we've had a cold snap here. Like I said, it's March 19th, um, and so it's very cold. As you can see, it's totally not running today. It's, it's still below freezing in midday today. So you see, we have no drip there on our tap. Um, so what that does is that's a reset. It's gonna set again, and this, this sap in the park is gonna run for several more weeks until we stay above freezing during the day and above freezing during the night that's when it'll stop and so right now we're so cold that it stopped so we got the other extreme too cold at night too cold during the day so it's quit running so to give you an idea of how we plug these at the end of the run i'm going to go ahead and show you the steps necessary to plug this one uh, we still have six trees tapped in the park that are running well and again like i said it's cold so it's going to go and start running again so i have seen that some of the people have taken me up on my offer of getting some of the sap and so it's still going to be here we're just going to plug this one today so you can get an idea of how we plug this tree in a good clean way so that we don't cause any disease to happen so i'll just set my uh sap down here we're going to take this over into kispoko town and be cooking it as well okay so i have my tap i'm going to go ahead and yank that out okay yeah you can still see it's still wet up in there so it's going to heat up through the day and it'll probably start running as we go along but we're going to go ahead and plug this one now it's important to use a limb or a branch from the tree that you're going to plug because it won't have any rejection now if you use a green limb you'll it won't work so well because it'll start running through the green limb so i'm going to believe that it's pretty reasonable to believe that this maple uh, maple branch here more than likely came from this tree. So I'm gonna look at that pole diameter. Oh, and it looks like it's right about there. So I'm just gonna take that and see this is nice and seasoned. So it's not green. If I would have used a green branch, it's possible that it would have kept running through the branch. But this is old, and so we'll just whittle this up a little bit, kind of clean it up so that we'll have a good like a plug effect. And I like to get that bark off of there and kind of expose some of that clean wood underneath there. So you don't have any, because uh, that bark will erode through time and it won't heal as good. So we just kind of clean that up pretty good there, like so. Let me square it off on the back because we'll take a hammer and we'll hammer it in there so that there's a real good seal. So that's pretty much all it's gonna take. Then I'll take a hammer. We used a rock last time, didn't work out so hot. I want to get really <laughs> precise this time. So I'll put it right there in the hole, start it there, and then take the hammer and gently, until it stops, nice and stop. Now that'll plug, and it's a little shy, but you'll be surprised with time that'll heal up. Now, uh, after we go ahead and we start cooking some of this sap off, I'm going to go and show you some of the other trees where the, this is healed and then show you what the progress is after it heals and that sort of thing. So now we'll gather up our sap and now we'll head over to Kispoko Town to start cooking it. So come on with me to an adventure. Oh, so here we are in uh, Kispoko Town. We have this wonderful giant iron cauldron here that was don donated by Karen Sullivan, Sullivan uh, to Kispoko Town for our use in our maple syrup cooking. We also do laundry in it. Uh, so uh, I have the sap that we just collected 
and here we typically would you would use like uh, some cheesecloth or uh, some people use coffee filters or even um, uh, paper towels are really good for filtering out things so what I have here is that raw sap and it has a few uh, ants in it it has some bark in it so what we'll do it we're using a traditional method here we have a gra a woven grass basket which we use for our, our, our filter system so we just pour that on through into there and then we're filling this cauldron up right now we've got about is there any water coming through now yeah, slowly but surely <laughs> okay so maybe I should have set up some kind of tripod there okay we're just gonna let that filter for just a second there. All right, so what we do is we get that in there. Right now we can probably get about 20 gallons of raw sap in this cauldron. So we let it start cooking. Now I've been cooking for several hours now. And what we'll do is we let it get what I like to call halfway cooked. And you'll see this foam start to come up onto the uh, uh, sap itself. And that's that Cambrian layer or what a lot of people will call sugar sand. So we let that get good and hot and that causes that sugar sand and that Cambrian layer to congeal in there. We then come in with a nice long dipper gourd and get some out when it's good and hot and then we'll come through again and we'll filter that through right on through the basket and that'll start helping to get that sugar sand out, okay? Which is not, it's not that it's inedible or gross or anything. It's just it doesn't look so good in the jar. So you try to get that out. Now what's interesting about what we're doing here is this phenomenon, this way of getting maple syrup and storing it in jars, this didn't come about till about 1920 when they started with the uh, sealable tin, tin jars that you could seal. Before this, uh, the Native Americans, they were actually after the sugar itself. They would cook this all the way down, past syrup, all the way until it can, turns into the sugar crystals. And that was very that was storable. You could put that away, you could put that in a pot, you could put that in a gourd, and it would store. And it was a powerhouse trade item for the American Indians because the only other sugar was cane sugar. And that was coming from Cuba, from the Bahamas during the, say, the 1700s and, so, and earlier on. And so it was a very expensive sugar. So the sugar for the common man, the common person, was maple sugar. A lot of people don't realize that. So because you would have had to have had, you know, got access to shipping and, and maybe a big fort and, and to get that white cane sugar. So what was more accessible was the native made maple sugar and they would pour that into birch bark cones and it would solidify and they could trade it off that way uh, sometimes they would take a log and cut it in half and hollow it out and pour that sugar in there and make these bricks and they would store these bricks of sugar that would be later traded off so again maple syrup didn't become popular until 1920s when they invented the sealable can jars Okay, so quick little brief on that. So we're filtering through here and I'm getting some nice clean sap there. Now, what that would then do is I would take that to a finishing jar, like a finishing pot, like you see here, I've got a lot of action here, but that's all right. So we're cooking this down and you can see it's starting to be very runny and it's very hot. So then what's very important is that your jars be preheated. Whatever jars you're going to set, because if you put this sap, this hot sap, in a cold jar, it'll explode. So you have to preheat the jars. This one's been sitting here by the fire for quite a while. I then come over to the jar. I take the sap, and we pour it out in the jar. Hopefully it doesn't pop. And we get a good pour there. Okay, now while it's hot, take the lid, put it on there. Put a decent seal, let it cool. When it cools, you'll hear that lid pop and it'll be sealed. Now, if you made a mistake and you didn't cook your syrup, your sap down enough to be a thick syrup, you get a little problem that happens. Now here I have a jar that I had finished and we didn't quite get it cooked down enough. And if I turn it sideways, uh, let's see, let's open it. You'll see the, what the problem is. You'll find out real quick 
if you didn't get all the water out of you see that yuck right there <laughs> that is mold that has grown in there grown in there because there was so much water left and you see that the, the sap is really runny right so that means we left too much water in there and so that was a fail but it's not a big problem we'll just take a spoon we'll ladle that off We'll put it back in the finishing pot, bring it up to a boil, and re-sift it and filter it real good. Put it back in there and it'd be just fine. So it's not too big of a problem. Okay, so that's how you can make a mistake. Now, we're going to let this cool. I will continue to put sap, raw sap in the pot, filling it. Uh, this has been cooking for about two hours now. and We've already lost about two inches of water off of it. So it goes pretty quick. A lot of people want to know how much wood it takes. To, to do this, I really couldn't find the answer for that. All I know is it takes a whole lot. Here in the park, it's not a problem because we're always dealing with the <laughs> ash borer, right? So we have tons of firewood. Uh, we have all this wood here under the shed here. Um, we just keep cooking. It's not that bad, really. Uh, but uh, keep the fire on there, keep it cooking. So now I'd like to, uh, we're gonna go on up to some of the older trees that I attacked years ago and plugged and we're going to see what the healing looks like on those trees okay thank you very much let's go okay so here we are uh, we're just going through the park kind of checking our tap trees and things and uh, one of the problems we have with our method that we use here a lot of the modern methods uh, that with the bag or with the line to tap the trees uh, it's very efficient um, and strong uh, with my way, it's kind of rigged, right? You know, I kind of improvise things. So it'll get heavy. That jug will get heavy with sap, and it'll fall off sometimes. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, if, if you see this, you can set it back up on here. But today, uh, we saw this one that had fell off, and we come over here to set up, and we look at it, and we see here that it didn't fill up and fall off. Matter of fact, the squirrels have come and chewed it off of the tap and it's down here so what i said earlier uh, in our first show about how the squirrels will come and drink out of there there's your proof right there you can literally see their teeth marks <laughs> where they chewed around and chewed it off they so know it's good there it is so uh obviously we're not going to be able to fix this one um, we'll leave it here for maybe somebody will come and collect what's there or the squirrel can just go on and enjoy <laughs> <laughs> its drink there. So that's just something we want to talk about is, you know, as you're coming out here and you guys are uh, utilizing getting these uh, uh, jugs off here, sometimes you'll see them fall off like that. You just stick them back on there. We kind of use the little forks to kind of hold things in place. But in a situation where the squirrels chew it off, I don't know what would do. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next spot. Okay, guys, so here we are at one of our trees that is all tapped out. You've heard the word all tapped out? Well, this is what it comes from. We've tapped this tree for many years in a row, and we're at the point now where that foot rule, remember, you can't go within a foot. The tree has to be a foot in diameter, and if you tap a tree, you have to tap, the next time you tap it, you have to be a foot away from it, okay? So, in this situation, we have right here, where did it go? It goes right away from me because it's healed so well. Oh, here it is. Yeah, See is. this little slit right here and that little dimple? That was about four years ago when we first tapped this tree. And you can see now that it's completely healed and become a part of the system. Now, uh, maybe two to three years ago, we tapped the tree again a foot away right here. And you can see that one is also very healed. It hasn't quite got that dimpling effect like the other one because it's a little bit more recent. Now, about three years ago, we tapped this one a little bit further away. And you can see that it hasn't quite healed over where I put that plug in like we did earlier. So a few more years, it'll look just like this. And this one right here will look like this one. This is a completely healed tap. Now, again, this tree is all tapped out. That means we can't do this tree anymore until the growth moves a good foot away to where we can start tapping in a fresh new spot. Now, a lot of people are like, well, we'll just go on the other side of the tree. Again, that's the dark side of the tree. We have the sun coming up here and going this way. So that means we only have a good that much space from there to there 
to tap within. So we've tapped out that spot. This tree's all tapped out. This old mother will be left alone probably for the next 10 to 15 years. And we won't ever tap this tree again. It'd be a long time before we do again. But that's okay. We have a lot of other trees that we can tap. Matter of fact, back in the woods right back here, we have another one. You can see the modern jugs hanging on it there. That tree's got two taps in it. It's a very big tree. It had never it hasn't been tapped in probably a hundred years. So that one's good to go. This one's all tapped out. We're going to let mama rest for a while. So uh, that's pretty much our uh, maple syrup production uh, demo here for you guys today. Uh, it's been really great. We're going to have some more stuff for you. Uh, this is Justin Houston saying happy spring equinox, everybody. See you next time.